In this video I want to talk about the pentose phosphate pathway. The purpose of the pentose phosphate pathway is essentially to produce two different things and those two different things are NADPH and ribulose 5-phosphate. Ribulose sounds a lot like ribose and uh, ribulose 5-phosphate is actually used to make nucleic acids. Right, and nucleic acids uh, usually involve the the um, deoxyribose or ribose. So this five carb, the, the pentose sugar, is necessary for, to to make nucleic acids. So this is involved in nucleic acid synthesis. What is NADPH involved in? Well, NADPH actually provides reducing power for biosynthesis or biosynthetic pathways. Now, I just said reducing power, so that means reduction. If you recall, from ARCO was the way I told you to remember that an anabolic reaction is a reductive pathway, or anabolic pathways are reductive processes, when and catabolic processes are oxidative pathways, right? So, in this case, biosynthesis is essentially anabolism, right? Building things. We're building biomolecules. We're going to need to reduce things, right? So NADPH is the reduced form of NADP+. So that reducing power is necessary in biosynthesis. Okay. Now the pentose phosphate, phosphate pathway is divided into two phases, the non-oxidative and oxidative phases. The non-oxidative phase, I'm not going to really go into too much detail about. It's basically just a series of carbon shuffling reactions. Basically, if there's a bunch of different um, monosaccharide phosphates and they can either be anywhere from three carbons long to seven carbons long and they can just shuffle in between those those you know three four five six seven carbons long but the point is um, there's it's, the, the reactions are reversible but the point of it essentially the point of the non-oxidative phase is it allows for the p production of ribulose 5 phosphate or I5P okay when we don't need NADPH so the pathway can create both of these but if we only want to create ribulose 5 phosphate then we want to go through the non-oxidative phase. However, if we want to create both of these different things here, then we're going to have the oxidative phase take over. The oxidative phase is two steps. So we're starting off with a glucose 6-phosphate, or a G6P, which if you recall is a 6-carbon molecule. And via two steps, we're going to create ribulose 5-phosphate, which of course is 5 carbons long. Okay, again, ribose is a 5-carbon sugar. Ribulose sounds very similar. And that's the part of the reason is, of course, because it has five carbons. So we lost a carbon here, right, going from G6P to R5P. How did we lose it? We lost it as a carbon dioxide. Now, reactions that result in the production of, a, of carbon dioxide be, are irreversible. And why is that? Because carbon dioxide is a gas. If you ever ran a reaction, and if you were in, for instance, like an OCHEM lab or a general chemistry laboratory, and you held a reaction in a fume hood, for example, um, that reaction, if a reaction expelled gas, could you take that gas and just put it right back into that container whether it was like a beaker or a flask? Not really, right? Once that gas is out, it's out, and that's that's pretty much it. Normally reactions that reverse, or excuse me, that create gases are irreversible reactions. So, and this, this is why here. So when in these two steps, we actually take each step, we take an NADP plus and turn it into an NADPH. So in those two steps, we actually create two and ADPH is for every one glucose 6-phosphate that we have. So how does that actually work? Well, if we start off with a glucose 6-phosphate, I've drawn it in its chain form here. Um, via, if we add the enzyme glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase, or G6PDH, what we'll do is we'll actually make our first NADPH right from NADP plus so what actually happened between here and here here we went from an aldehyde to our carboxyl group so we lost the hydrogen and we created another bond to oxygen which so G6P was oxidized and NADP plus was reduced so now we have this reduced form of NADPH of we have NADPH which as for um, re reducing power now once we have this new molecule here this 6 phosphogluconate uh, that um, if we add 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase, which is just the dehydrogenase enzyme that acts on this, we're going to create that next 
NADPH. Right, so that's our second NADPH that we created. And what we're going to do is we're going to take, notice here we have, we started off with a six carbon molecule. This is still a six carbon molecule. But um, the reason I've actually drawn two arrows here is because there's actually an intermediate here that I didn't draw. It's not really too necessary to draw. Um, what the point is that we go from this six carbon molecule to this ribulose five phosphate white, which was our goal, which is a five carbon molecule. So what happened here? Well, we lost this carbon, this carboxyl group here as a carbon dioxide. In addition, this OH group is now a carbonyl, so it was oxidized. So if this thing was oxidized, this, something must have been reduced. The NADP plus was reduced to NADPH. Okay. So that's that for those two those two phases. Now, when would the pentose phosphate pentose phosphate pathway actually occur, and how is it controlled? Really, really simple actually. The control of the pentose phosphate pathway. Um, all you have to know, really, all you have to understand is essentially that it uses G6P, right? So, if there's a, if there's G6P around, the pentose phosphate pathway can happen, but it will happen um, depending on the needs. So G6P is also involved in glycolysis. So there's a bunch of G6, G6P around. Glycolysis can happen too. So it really is need based. So because G6P can go onto glycolysis or the pentose phosphate pathway. Um, we think about, well, what do we need? If we need energy, if we need ATP, then we will um, have G6P go to the pathway that creates ATP, which in this case is glycolysis. But if we need NADPH because we plan on uh, having some biosynthetic pathways go through, then the G6P will go through the pentose phosphate pathway. Simple as that. Um, that's about it for the pentose phosphate pathway. I hope that was helpful. Uh, thank you for watching.